Okay, so um, the sort of sister function of concat is append. And we're going to append data frame one to data uh, data frame two to data frame one and then data frame four to data frame one. So remember one and two just have they're just numbered zero through three and four through seven. Um, and um, one thing to note is that um, we didn't well, let's just check yeah we didn't change the value of df1 when we did this so um, if we wanted to no so sometimes there's an option called in place. You could say in place equals true, but that's not uh, available to us. So what we'd have to do is say df1 equals df1.append df2. But we're not going to do that for this example. Um, we just see that append works the same way as concat, except instead of passing a list of two things, we're, we're taking the first one and then appending the second. Um, so we can there's some different options that we can use with um, with that, but um, just a different different way to do it. So um, next up is merge. So um, it's similar but but different. And so you want to think about what you're really trying to do. Question. Mm hmm Why does it so it gives me the DF one plus the DF two twice? Um, well, because you ran the command probably more than once, right? I could if I do this again, it's gonna keep adding it. Right, because I'm changing it every time. Yeah. So the um, you would have to go back and rerun um, that initial command. We have to rerun this one, and now we go down, um, and now it works. So this is why I, I say um, this is another good reason why before you turn in your assignment, you should restart and run all and make sure that it works because um, you might have done something, you might have changed something along the way and kind of forgotten that you changed it and then, um, you know, you can, the other thing you can do in, in, in IPython or, or Jupyter is you can run cells out of order, um, you can run them multiple times, you can do all kinds of things that might have unintended consequences. So. Um, you want your um, you want your uh, notebook to ideally to run properly in linear fashion and not have to you know run things out of order or think, things like that. So yeah. Okay, so um, merging is uh, is slightly different. So in, in this case, we're going to take two data frames, um, and we refer to these as left and right. Um, so you have two objects and um, two data frame objects, and you're going to merge them. So, um, and you're going to, you need some, col you need basically a column in the left and a column in the right to, to merge on. And what it's going to do is go through those columns and find all of the matching, um, all of the matching values, and and then merge those rows, typically um, using those those matching values as the as the things to to, to join on, like the keys to join on. Um, so if your if your data frames were um, 
identical, like you, it, there's some cases where you could just use concat, but but when you're using merge, there's there's some differences in your data frames, or they're um, you don't maybe they're in different orders, and you and you want something a little more sophisticated. So merge is really powerful for for this. So um, you can um, if you just have a single. There's a there's a lot of different ways to specify how you want to merge. So um, first of all, we have this this option called how, which is whether we want um, sort of this outer or inner thing, whether we want to th only things that match and um, only like say columns that are found in both uh, data frames or, or 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 things that are just found in one. Um, we'll see some examples of that, but there are a number of ways to specify um, what you're going to merge on. So if you just say on equals, and then you're going to pass the name of a um, the name of a column. Um, so this would be a column that would be found with the exact same name in both data frames. Oftentimes that's not the true not true, or you want to be more explicit. So you can say left on equals the name of the column and right on equals the name of that column. Um, so for example, um, if you have two data frames with the column name sample name, say you're, you're merging information about your samples. You have two, two data frames with the column name sample name. So you can say merge data frame one, data frame two, left on equals sample name, right on equals sample name, and it will merge those two data frames using that sample name identifier as the thing. So this is super, super useful for a lot of things that we do in data science and bioinformatics and et cetera. So um, if, and this is another common example, you have the, um, the say your sample name is your index. Oftentimes that's true, right? Your, your index, you, you, you import, when you import your data frame, you didn't say index equals um, none or uh, right so remember when we in, when we import the default behavior of importing a CSV is to make the the first row the header and the, the first column is going to be numerical indexing numerical indexing but if you say index column equals zero it will use column zero as your index column which is your the first column of your data and that's oftentimes going to be the the names of your samples or, or the names of your of your rows right so that's a really handy way to to do it because now you can use that information to pull out let's say I want the information on the data from you know December 4th so I can use that index to get the data from December 4th so you might have two data frames where you have the that sample name as your index so you can say instead of saying left on right on if it's an index there's a special argument for that which is left index equals true, right index equals true. So by default, these are these are false. But you would say, I want to pd dot merge df1 and df2. Left index equals true, and right index equals true, and it will merge those two data frames using the index. Um, there's a few other options that, that we can um, specify, but we'll we'll come to those as as we need to. So. Here we're going to make uh, two data frames. We're going to make one called left and one called right. And um, what we've done is we have a zero, b zero, same kind of style here of our of our values, but we have another column called key, which we can use to um, to merge on. And this, you can see, these keys are in different orders in the two data frames. So when we merge, we're going to get, we're going to get, um, the values are going to get rearranged. But that, that's what we want because the key is the the key piece of information. It's like the sample name. So if we do a pd dot merge, left right on key, this is the result. So we get, this is just our left um, data frame here, and then the right is merged using the keys. And so the you can see now that these values are now uh, 
uh, switched. So the, the indexes here um, don't matter. That those are in the second data frame. They're 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 backwards. But the the key point is that uh, we've we've now merged these in, in the the correct um, orientation. So we can um, see a different example where we have two keys. So you can merge on multiple things. Um, so let's say you have let's say your sample names are let's say you have sample names and you have experiments and your sample names might be the same for each experiment but you have multiple experiments so one of your keys could be the sample name and then the second key could be the experiment and you're going to merge using both values so it has to be uh, the unique pairs of those two keys would be what what matters so if we merge those we see that um, we have um, either key zero, key zero, key, uh, key one is k zero, key two is k zero, k one, k zero, k one, k zero, etc. So, um, and it's giving us all of the um, the combinations. Now, um, how we merge is is specified using this how uh, argument. So um, there are four options, left, right, outer, and inner. And if we go back up to our documentation, it will say that um, the default for uh, the default for uh, how is defaults to inner. So that's what we saw here. We're only getting the uh, the rows that had matching um, matching values for both of these. So things that didn't match, we just we just throw out. Um, you can, but you can change that behavior. And um, I should point out that if we want to know, if we want to know this, if we forget and we don't want to have to go look up the information, remember we can type question mark, and this will give us all the same information that we just that that I have printed in the notebook. So um, very handy guide to this, and there's even examples. So don't forget that this is this is always available to you on, on all these different functions and, and objects as well. So by default we're doing inner. Um, and in fact, let's just say. By the way, this is how you do a table in markdown format. It's kind of annoying, but it works. So if we do left, what we're going to get is everything that's in the left data frame will be preserved, whether or not those keys match or not. And then the things in the right data frame will only be added if if they match. So if we have yeah, if we have if we have rows in in the right data frame that don't match that the, whose keys don't match anything in the left data frame, we won't get those rows. But the converse is not true. So that we get everything from the left data frame. So um, again, this is left, this is right, so we should we have a um, a, B, 1 through 3, and C, D, 1 through, 0 through 3. So, sorry, 0 through 3, 0 through 3. And we're getting all of these values are in the, um, the merged data frame, but, but even if they are missing from the, the right data frame, we still get the left, but the same is not true for the right. Um, you probably have to sit down and kind of like look at these for a while to realize what's going on. I know it's hard to just like 
see all these patterns when I'm going through this quickly. Um, but with practice, you will you will you will understand. Um, so just an example: if we if we set how equals right, now we're getting um, just so the right data frame everything is included, but that means for the left um, we might have some missing values, and we do here. If we do outer, we're going to get everything. So whether there's a match or not, it, all the values will be maintained, and it will just put NANs where they're missing. Um, and inner, again, is the default behavior. Okay, um, so there's a there's something called indicator, which let's just go back. So it tells us indicator is a boolean or a string. Um, if true, it adds a column to the output called underscore merge with information on the source of each row. If it's a string, a uh, column with that information on source of each row will be added to the output data frame. So so this is, this is a, a nice um, option if you want to see what's going on, make sure you're, everything's making sense. So we have these two data frames, uh, one and two, that have, they both have something called call one, and this one has something called call left, and this one has something called call right, just to keep track. And so when we merge these, we're going to do an outer merge, so everything's going to be maintained. We're not going to remove any, any values. We're going to merge on call one, data frame one and two, as left and right. And then we're going to create this indicator column as well to tell us where these values came from. So um, here we can see that we have um, that we have that the values from column uh, from the first from the left data frame. So we have column one value, and we have this call left thing, and then call right was not um, did not match. Um, so that came from left only. Uh, this one matched in both. Um, and this one is matching in right only. Question? So, yeah, maybe it's... Um, so, okay, so we're saying I want to match or, or uh, merge on call one. So it's going to go through and say, okay, left data frame is DF1 and right data frame is DF2. So uh, here's column one and, and, here, and here's column one in, in DF2. So DF1, DF2. So it's going to say zero. Is there a zero in, so there's a zero in DF1. Is there a zero in DF2? No. So when it, when I merge and I, and I, keep everything, it's going to say, okay, column one is zero um, in, in data frame one, in the left data frame it has A, but in the, in the right data frame there is no zero for column one, so it, it, it only is in the left. And the same is true, you can see there's a two here, there's no two in this, in this data frame, so um, so it's printed here, but in um, in the left data frame it's not present, and in the right data frame it's two. Um, also, you can see that this one is converted to a float instead of an integer because it has a NAND value, and that's just sort of how it behaves. So things to be to be noticing, but um, but this mer if you're just 
you know, getting as you're just getting started with this, using this indicator um, thing, we could also just say indicator equals true. Um, it'll just call it dot merge. Um, just to, we can give it a different name if we want, but the point is that it will tell us what's what's going on.